A rainforest is an untamed, mysterious, and amazing area. Each year, courageous biologists who brave the jungle report new species of plants and animals. The lives of anthropologists are devoted to discovering more about the most insular people on Earth. It takes a lot of work, but scientists are getting better and better at mapping out the mysteries of the forest as time goes on. They, in turn, unravel confused mysteries about the damp world beneath the canopy. It's not often that scientists discover uncharted territory on our planet. In truth, that occurrence is extremely uncommon. Almost the whole planet has been mapped out using Google Earth. With just a few mouse clicks, we can all view its photographs. Simply put, there aren't many uncharted areas left. It has been centuries since bold explorers set sail in search of new lands. So you can imagine how shocked scientists were when an environmentalist found a brand new rainforest in Africa. What did we discover concealed atop an African mountain amid an untouched rainforest? What lies beneath the surface of the hidden rainforest? Join us as we explore how scientists have just found an untouched rainforest on top of a mountain in Africa and the endless hours spent by researchers trying to decipher the rainforest's mysteries. Commercial exploitation, including logging and conversion for agriculture, has severely devastated the tropical rainforests of Africa, with the exception of the Congo Basin. The natural rainforest in West Africa has been destroyed to the tune of roughly 90%. The remainder is severely disorganized and in a bad condition due to infrequent use. The desertification of Africa and the conversion of rainforests to erosion-prone farms and grazing pastures are two of the continent's gravest environmental challenges. The Congo Zaire River Basin is home to the vast majority of Africa's tropical rainforests. However, smaller pockets can be found throughout Western Africa. These forests are in dismal condition due to poverty-driven subsistence cultivation and firewood collection. When compared to the other regions, this one is relatively dry and seasonal, and its fringes of rainforest are slowly giving way to desert. Nearly the past century, West Africa has lost nearly 90% of its natural forest, and only a fraction of what is left is considered closed forest. During the 1980s, Africa lost a greater proportion of its tropical rainforests than any other tropical region. Between 1990 and 1995, Africa lost about 1% of its forest cover every year. For every 28 trees that are felled across Africa, only one is replaced. It may be hard to imagine, however, that there are still uncharted regions of the Earth. However, with some time and patience, one brave conservation scientist has proven otherwise. Few people have had the good fortune to see the hidden rainforest atop Mount Liko in northern Mozambique, which is shielded by a steep circle of rock. Locals were aware of the mountain, but they had no idea the forest existed until Julian Bayliss discovered it via satellite images six years ago. However, he didn't come clean about his discoveries until recently, at the Oxford Nature Festival. Mount Liko, the ancient core of a volcano with the forest nested in its crater, towers over the surrounding landscape like the villain's citadel in an old James Bond film. Dr. Julian Bayliss found it while searching satellite images for untouched tropical forests. In his words, the woodland atop Liko was isolated and appeared totally undisturbed when he first discovered it on Google Earth. There are approximately half of all known species of life in the world's rainforests, which are the oldest living biomes on Earth. They have the longest and most extensive carbon storage times of any known living system. Some tropical rainforests have been there since the time of the dinosaurs, but even those that are younger than that have been modified by humans. Bayless pondered the possibility of virgin forests existing at higher altitudes. To this day, he wonders what such a forest may be like. Liko was the correct response. However, the mountain's daunting topography posed fresh concerns regarding accessibility. The rock wall that encircles it stands 2,300 feet above the plain. Bayless decided to organize an expedition to get scientists to the peak of Liko 
via a shorter cliff of roughly 410 feet on one side. But how would they ascend to that level? The first expedition, directed by Bayliss and consisting of 28 people, took place not too long ago. It took two years to build the dream team of biologists, logistics crew, plant experts, and researchers. The initiative involved 13 universities, museums, and research institutes across three continents, and was funded in part by Ranulf Fian's Transglobe Expedition Trust, the UK-based Biosensus, and the African Butterfly Research Institute. Bayliss, who works out of a former chapel in the Welsh mountains, got in touch with Jules Lines and Mike Robertson, two of the top professional climbers in the UK. In a well-known act of protest against the French oil firm Total, Robertson famously climbed to the top of the Eiffel Tower all by himself before being arrested by the French police. When climbing without the aid of a rope, Lines earns the nickname the Dark Horse among climbers. Above the scientists' camp, the climbers mounted the rock face and strung two ropes all the way to the ground. They patiently showed the scientists how to use the stairs properly. Holding the safety rope for 29-year-old Mozambican biologist Ana Gledis da Conceso Miranda, Robertson remarked, Learning to ascend a 4-10-foot cliff in the jungle is a lot to ask of people. Robertson works at the Pringle and E.O. Wilson labs. She had difficulty using the rope ascenders, but unlike the other researchers, she persisted. These researchers have incredible courage and perseverance. More than 40 times, the two climbers ascended the ropes to bring down supplies and equipment. There was a medical emergency due to a severe infection, but everyone made it up and down the ropes without incident. Bayliss thinks the woodland on Lico might be one of the last remaining unspoiled woods on the planet. In order to interpret the soil layers like a history book of Lico's past, Wilcock and his colleague, Dr. Phil Platts from the University of York, dug for two days to reach the forest bedrock. The soil has a record of everything that has happened there, from the fires that have burnt to the plants that have grown, and even the millions of caterpillar droppings. There are so many caterpillars on the trees on Lico that their excreta fall to the ground like a light, dry rain. Understanding how forests respond to climate change over time is made possible by studying this particular forest. The group returned to their base camp under Lico's protection after 10 days of exploration. After filling in the hole and replacing the dirt, veteran lepidopterist Colin Congdon was reviewing his findings with Bayliss. The first proven new species in Lyco was a butterfly, and it was among those tiny, translucent papers. Scientists believe it won't be the only one of its kind. Frogs, toads, cassilians, amphibians that resemble snakes, a shrew, a snub-nosed rodent, more butterflies, crabs, and even a flowering plant are all on the list of possible new species to be confirmed in the coming months. The researchers also uncovered some antique pots that had been partially buried near the river's origin, suggesting that Lico is full of mystery. The locals claim that no one from history or folklore has ever reached the peak of the mountain. How did the potters climb up such a precarious precipice? Were the elevations near Lico greater back then? Can we tell how old they are by analyzing the soil? A team of anthropologists is looking at it. The voyage to Lico was a shining example of cooperative research between institutions on different continents, with participants ranging from a South African herpetologist to a Brazilian biogeographer, a botanist from the Royal Botanic Gardens, Q, to a mammal expert from Swaziland. This was the highlight of the trip for Bayliss's Mozambican counterpart, Herman Agildo Matimele, curator of the National Herbarium of Mozambique in Maputo. Since the discovery of the rainforest, Lico has become famous all over the world. The fact that it captivated the audience shows just how uncommon locations like that are. As a species, we humans are unparalleled in our boldness. We've expanded our geographic range more than any other. When nearly everywhere on Earth already bears the marks of human habitation, 
conservationists may wonder why they should bother traveling to and drawing attention to these remaining natural strongholds. The knowledge we get from these kinds of journeys about nature, our place in it, and how to guide the wildest of locations through the Anthropocene will determine the answer. It's not always a good idea to sit back and hope for the best. This mission was a continuation of a decades-long study of the area, with the ultimate goal of gathering data that can be used to secure legal protection for Mozambique's mountain forests. There are no mountains in northern Mozambique that are under national or international protection at the moment. The discovery of new species can be used to argue for the preservation of these areas. The trip was the first to conduct a biological survey of neighboring Mount Sokone, as well as exploring Mount Liko. Sokone is a symbol of the dangers that face many of the world's woods, including those in Mozambique, Africa, and beyond. Every second, enough forest to cover one football pitch is destroyed around the world, hastening the extinction of numerous species. Soil erosion, flooding during the wet season, and a lack of water during the dry season are all consequences of deforestation on mountain slopes. The few human footprints on Liko will be hidden in time, and the island's flora and fauna will remain safe behind the same steep cliffs, more than four to ten feet high, that have protected them thus far. The trip would not have been possible without the assistance of world-class climbers. However, human beings have an influence well beyond the places they have physically established themselves. Carbon dioxide levels are now higher than they have been in at least the past 400,000 years, thanks to human activity, which has led to rising temperatures and altered weather patterns. Liko's forest is vulnerable to climate change, much like every other ecosystem on Earth, despite its protected location atop a rocky outcrop. Liko has a lot to tell us about the effects of climate change despite being shielded from direct human interference. Most forests go through both of these processes at the same time, making it challenging to disentangle their relative and interacting effects. Information gathered from Liko, Sokone, and other forests throughout the world provides light on how human disturbance hinders forest resilience against climate change. Experts in archaeology and climate science are looking into it. Liko's woodland is one of the least disturbed on Earth because of the pots, the area's remarkable inaccessibility, and the lack of any other indications of human activity. However, one thing is certain. People do indeed go far and wide. The years 2014 and 2015 were a golden era for the biological sciences. During those two years, scientists found nearly 400 previously unknown species in the Amazon. The vegetation in a jungle is typically thick and numerous. That new discoveries are being made is therefore not shocking. However, some of these discoveries were essential to comprehending the endangered ecosystem and its inhabitants. In fact, there was one that piqued interest more than the rest. In 2010, the fire-tailed TD monkey was discovered in a hidden corner of the Amazon rainforest in southern Brazil. However, biologists lacked sufficient data to properly categorize it at the time. The creature's brilliant red tails made them stand out, although there weren't too many of them. They never come down from the trees where they spend their whole lives, so studying them is tricky. For a long time, scientists kept returning to the jungle in the hopes of learning more. Finally, by 2015, a basic understanding of the monkey's personality and habits had begun to take shape. It was eventually recognized as Milton's Titi monkey. The Brazilian primatologist Milton Thiago de Mello is being honored with this name. Because of the monkey's high-altitude environment, detailed information is scarce. Their reputation for isolation and solitary behavior extends far beyond the ape species. As a result, Keeping track of data has been a tedious procedure. Wildlife biologists have been trying to learn more about them, but their secluded environments have made that difficult. There is still a lot that biologists don't know about these ape-like jungle dwellers. Furthermore, it is common knowledge that spiders use silk to create webs. However, in the Amazonian woods of eastern Peru, 
certain spiders have begun constructing unusual webs. In reality, scientists haven't been able to tie down a specific species of spider as the spinner. And it wasn't until 2013 that their existence was uncovered. Entomologists have always been awed by the complexity of these webs. People have begun to refer to these structures as silk henges because of their resemblance to a miniature version of England's Stonehenge. Phil Torres, a tropical entomologist, managed to get some incredible footage of the silk structures in 2019. Torres and others think they are created by a spider guarding an egg sac. However, arachnologists haven't been privy to the creation of these silk henges. Experts have few clues as to their purpose because no physical proof of their construction exists. Despite this, they are not uncommon. Silken works of art have been discovered by some explorers in remote regions of the Amazon basin. One of the most intriguing and enigmatic locations in the Amazon is close to Pucalpa, a small hamlet in central Peru. There is a legend that the town's red-hot river will kill everything that falls into it. Mayantuyaku's raging river is scalding hot year-round. Researchers have found temperatures ranging from almost 120 to over 200 degrees Fahrenheit there. The length of this river is about 4 miles, so it's not very significant. With a maximum depth of 16 feet, it's not particularly potent either, but the water can be fatal if it boils over. Those who have accidentally fallen in have been severely burned. If you want to escape serious harm or death, you shouldn't come here. The river is regarded as holy regardless of the circumstances. The river is protected by a shaman who says the water can cure illness. Environmentalists find the river's high temperatures fascinating. To investigate the Mayantuyaku, Peruvian geoscientist Andres Ruzo traveled to Pucallpa that same year. The average temperature, he said, was 187 degrees Fahrenheit. Even while the water wasn't quite boiling, he could see how dangerously hot it was for wildlife. But he couldn't figure out why the river was so hot. The area he examined showed no signs of volcanic activity. Even now, years later, Ruzo still doesn't know why the river is boiling. He thinks the river might be floating over a large underground cavern. The water gains heat as it travels deeper into the planet. The waiter is then forced upwar through the gaps and crevices by the heat. According to his theory, even when the water finally reaches the surface, it is still unusually warm. Ruzo is still researching rivers today. One day he thinks, Science may provide an explanation for the mysterious event. Do you know that South America was the last continent colonized by humans? Prehistoric humans probably settled in the area around the end of the last ice age, about 12,000 years ago, according to migration patterns. Scientists have spent decades piecing together what they know about those early settlements. The Amazon's enormous biodiversity and its rain-drenched ecology have both added layers of complexity to the picture. Researchers still don't have a good picture of life in the forests during the dawn of civilization. In 2017, however, that started to change. In that year, explorers dug eight miles into the Colombian forest and uncovered a gallery of prehistoric paintings and drawings. The hand-scrawled pictures were discovered in a jungle and are presumed to be quite old. Animals such as mastodons and huge sloths are depicted in the illustrations. Images of prehistoric human settlements and wildlife in the region are also featured. Biologists are particularly fascinated by the depiction of extinct animals and plants. They plan to learn more about the early biodiversity in the rainforest by carefully analyzing each cave painting. Meanwhile, there are indigenous communities living isolated lives in the Amazon rainforest. Most people today are familiar with contemporary culture. Illegal logging and mining have devastating effects on many people. However, anthropologists still don't have a good grasp on their lifestyle. These indigenous communities live deep in the jungle, far from any other human civilization. The Piripkura are a very distant people. In the recent past, there were just approximately 20 people living in their remote town in the Brazilian West. Even the people who live around them know very little about them. 
their migratory ways have earned them the nickname Butterfly People among the neighboring Gavio tribe. It wasn't until 1998 that Brazilian authorities learned of the people's plight. Two male Piripcura villagers had to leave the woods that year to seek medical attention. They told physicians that an invading band of hostiles had killed most of their companions during their stay. A judge in Brazil took action in 2021 after becoming concerned about the small size of the organization. He mandated that 600,000 acres of land be reserved by the indigenous organization Funai for the Piripcura. It is hoped that there would be sufficient room for the tribe to flourish far from civilization. However, there are growing concerns as illegal logging operations move ever closer to residential areas. We may soon lose all knowledge of one of the most mysterious and exotic cultures in the world. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.